My name is Ramiro. I am one of the founders of Octeto, the company, and also one of the maintainers of Octeto, the open source project. It's a CLI tool that lets you launch your dev environment in Kubernetes and then gives you things like code synchronization, remote debugging. Feels like your local machine. You write some code and then you see the changes immediately. But because they are applied to your dev environment in Kubernetes, you're not consuming local resources and things look a lot more like production. From talking to Octeto customers and serving them so far, what would you say makes a great developer experience and how does it relate to open source as well? Yeah. When we started Octeto, like dev experience and onboarding wasn't really like a top of mind. For us, we we're very focused on like, hey, I want to write code and I want to have a fast, you know, inner loop. Now my dev environment is codified on a file, which means that, and it's automated, which means that any developer can just run one command or with our commercial product, click a button in the UI and they're completely onboarded, giving developers a great dev experience. It was no longer just solve a problem. It's solve a problem in a way that is easy to use, that is easy to understand. I mean, I think Docker uh, was kind of like the first, in my opinion, one of the very first open source projects that really made this a core part of their mission. And now it's super exciting to see all this, all these great open source projects, um, Superbase, Pig. One of the things I wish I could go back and, and do is like be even more, build this for like even a more specific audience. The more specific you are in what you're solving, especially when you're going commercial, the easier it is to find an audience, to really understand what they need, and to make sure that you're serving them and you're prioritizing what matters for that specific, it's called persona. The smaller you start, I think the easier it is to, to find those, you know, the super fans at the beginning, because if you solve a problem well for like 20 people and they're going to go and start your repo and tell their friends and tweet about it or write blog posts and, and tutorials about it, that's how you build. Like that's kind, of, that's kind of when you see your adoption and your popularity climb like, like crazy. Really important. So clarity on who you're building for and who you're not building for uh, helps you find your audience faster, helps you prioritize. Uh, I should add, you probably introduced a tighter loop in terms of monetization, how you can go about generating revenue out of your solution. Make sure this is a problem that's big enough for people to pay money to solve. Because a lot of problems are important, but people are not willing to pay money to solve it. And that to me is one of those, once you unlock that, it's like, and sometimes it's a matter of like how you phrase it, how you position the problem, how do you explain it to different people? That to me is very important. And, and number three, which was the hardest lesson for me to learn, especially if you go into like, like commercial software is the person who uses your software is most likely not the person who's going to buy it. Hmm. And understanding that difference changes everything because then you understand the buyer and the user, what do each of them care about? The sooner you can kind of figure this out, the more likely that you're going to be successful. I think it's a great time to start a commercial open source company. And, and you know, for those who have open source projects to think about ways that, you know, you can quit your job and, and find a way that you can work full time on that problem in the space that your open source project solves. That to me is like, it's a huge privilege. And it's a lot of fun.